Earth, a 4.5 billion year old planet still evolving. As continents shift and clash, volcanoes erupt, glaciers grow and recede. The Earth's crust is carved in countless fascinating ways, leaving a trail of geological mysteries behind. Water, one of the most powerful forces on the planet. It plays a crucial role in creating life and destroying it, in forging landscapes and in breaking apart the Earth. In its most dramatic form, it becomes a killer wave known as a tsunami. Until recently, predicting when these monsters may next strike has been impossible. But today, scientists are starting to understand these giant waves by connecting clues as varied as ancient Japanese writings and landslides, ancient corals, and buried Native American settlements. The secrets of tsunamis are finally being unlocked. Tsunamis, one of the most deadly forces of nature. Giant waves that travel faster than a jet plane. They can cross entire oceans in just hours. They have the power to smash buildings, vehicles, anything in their way. By itself, you wouldn't think that water just streaming into the coast would necessarily cause so much damage. But in fact, they are very fast moving and they pick up everything in its path. So it's not the water by itself, it's what comes with the water that is also a part of the big hazard. A tsunami isn't over in just a few seconds. It is a torrent of raging water that keeps coming. The main thing about a tsunami is the persistence. It comes on and on and on, and just when you think it has to quit, it keeps coming. And it's the power plus the, the duration that is unstoppable, really. Tsunamis have ravaged the Earth for billions of years. When the Earth was first created, the moon was much closer. It filled the sky. Its gravitational pull was much stronger, and it generated towering waves over half a mile high that raced across the primeval oceans. Oh my God! Today, tsunamis are still a threat to coastlines all over the world. Tsunamis will always occur and have always occurred throughout Earth history. But it's only been more recently as population densities have increased and people have moved and migrated to the coastal regions that we've become much more aware of the tsunami hazards. The investigation into what caused these monster waves began over a thousand years ago on the islands of Japan. This country is the world's tsunami hotspot its coasts have been pounded with these enormous waves more than anywhere else on the planet. Evidence for this is the word tsunami itself. It is Japanese and literally means harbor wave. Japan has the longest written tsunami record of anywhere in the world. The records go back as far as 684 AD. By studying these records, it is possible to work out that, on average, this country has been struck nearly every seven years. Samurai writings speak of people living on the coasts running for higher ground as soon as they felt an earthquake. The Japanese knew this was a clue, a warning sign that a deadly tsunami would soon follow. But despite their attempts to escape, Tsunamis have continually brought death and destruction to these islands. In 1896, a wave that hit Honshu in the northeast claimed the lives of 27,000 people. In 1933, the same area was smashed again. This time, 3,000 people were swept away. And in 1993, 
the island of Akashiri was rocked by an enormous earthquake measuring 7.8 on the Richter scale. Buildings were leveled and fires raged. But worse was to come. Minutes after the shaking had subsided, an ominous white crest appeared on the horizon. A tsunami. A gigantic wave swept in, flattening any buildings still standing. In Japan, the locals had already worked out the connections between earthquakes and tsunamis. But there's another hot spot on Earth where tsunamis regularly strike, the Hawaiian Islands. But very few of them were preceded by an earthquake. The city of Hilo on the Big Island has been dubbed the tsunami capital of the world. Dozens of these enormous waves have hit these beautiful islands, and the mystery is why. With no natural warning to go on, the people of Hawaii must rely on the world's biggest tsunami monitoring station. Set up in 1949, it is connected to a network of buoys spread across the Pacific Ocean. These buoys provide important clues. They monitor changes in sea level that indicate the approach of any potential tsunamis. In 1960, scientists got the breakthrough they were looking for. They were finally able to work out the type of event at the root of Hawaii's mystery tsunamis. An enormous quake on the coast of Chile, the biggest recorded of all time with a factor 9.5 on the Richter scale, triggered a tsunami that swept across the entire Pacific Ocean in just a few hours. The islands of Hawaii were thousands of miles away, directly in its path. The Tsunami Warning Center was monitoring its progress, revealing for the first time that a single massive wave crossed thousands of miles of ocean. The Warning Center was a success. They were able to evacuate the communities closest to the shore before the wave struck. But the homes they left behind were decimated. In Hilo, the tsunami was so strong it even bent parking meters in half. The wave continued past Hawaii to Japan. It had lost none of its power. Pacific-wide, this tsunami cost more than 2,000 lives and caused millions of dollars worth of damage. Devastating as it was, the 1960 event was a turning point in the study of tsunamis. It was the first time that scientists could accurately measure how the size of an underwater earthquake directly affected the size of a tsunami. And conclusive proof that a tsunami can travel thousands of miles across the Earth. And it was with this Chilean earthquake that we really could prove that the uh, undersea motions associated with the earthquake are generating these huge effects. Now, scientists had the evidence to confirm that undersea earthquakes were directly responsible for tsunamis. The ancient Japanese suspicion was now scientific fact. In terms of modern tsunami study, the 1960 wave was year zero. The Chilean earthquake was, you might say, the perfect storm. It's when scientific understanding had advanced to the point where scientists had begun to see the link connecting everything. So it's a new science. We're talking about something which is really only less than 50 years old. There are more tsunamis in the Pacific Ocean than any other. So in 2004, the world was taken by surprise when one of the largest recorded tsunamis of all time took place in the Indian Ocean. On December 26, 2004, Indonesia was rocked by the second largest recorded earthquake ever, 9.2 on the Richter scale. Minutes later, a 90-foot tsunami slammed into the Southeast Asian coastline. 225,000 men, women, and children lost their lives. the Indonesian earthquake had as much energy in it as the total energy consumption in the United States in one year. This enormous burst of energy had been released in just seconds. Once again, 
the world had been reminded of the Earth's awesome power. In the last 50 years, scientists were finally able to confirm a solid link between earthquakes and tsunamis. By monitoring the size of the Chilean earthquake in 1960, scientists were able to prove conclusively that earthquakes triggered these gigantic waves. By following the path of this tsunami, they were able to prove that a tsunami could travel thousands of miles from its origin. Monitoring the earthquakes that caused this incredible devastation involves looking many miles underground. By investigating the power at the root of these giant waves, scientists can begin to figure out when and where these waves may strike next. These dramatic pictures of the aftermath of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami show the havoc a tsunami can unleash. It's almost impossible to imagine something like that happening here in the Pacific Northwest. But Professor Brian Atwater believes that events like the 2004 tsunami could one day happen right here, too. He was intrigued by early settlers' accounts of Native American folklore tales that spoke of great waves sweeping inland. They convinced him that huge, locally generated tsunamis have struck here before and could strike again, posing a threat to tens of thousands of people living on the Pacific Northwest coast. To find out if he was right, he needed to uncover evidence of past giant waves hidden in this landscape. To be really sure it's a tsunami, though, he would also have to find evidence of the earthquake that caused it. Atwater's starting point is the Copalis River in Washington State, just a couple of miles from the long, sandy beaches that make this area a thriving tourist resort. In the banks of this estuary lie buried thousands of years of history. This is one of the dirtiest jobs in science. Hunting for evidence of earthquakes is a muddy business, but it's worth it. Atwater has found signs of a potential tsunami. There's a clue in this bank that nature has provided. It's this notch. And notches like this are common where tsunamis have laid out sheets of sand, and then later currents and, and waves come along and they pluck the sand grains out of the bank, but they leave the mud. Atwater has to dig deeper to find what he is looking for a layer of sand that could have been swept miles inland by a tsunami. Okay, so now you can see the sand. What deposited this sand? Maybe it was a tsunami. To prove that this was sand from a tsunami, Atwater's muddy quest must continue. He also needs to find proof that the land here around the river has moved up or down, a sure sign of an earthquake. After some hard work, Atwater finds what he has been looking for, clear evidence of both an earthquake and a tsunami. This time, there was a human cost as well. Here we have evidence for abrupt lowering of land, and we also have evidence for the associated tsunami. In this case, humans are involved. This was a fishing camp. Here you have the remains of that fishing camp in the form of fired crack rocks, which were the rocks were used to heat water mainly. Okay, so fishing camp overrun by tsunami. Because the land dropped after the tsunami, the tides came in and covered the fishing camp site and made sure that people wouldn't use it again. The land the fishing camp was built on was dragged down during the earthquake. The tsunami deposited sand over the remains, and finally the tide covered the settlement with mud, where it remained undisturbed until now. Atwater finally had the proof he needed. His Native American myths of giant waves were no mere legend. But what was it that caused the earthquake? The prime suspect lay 50 miles offshore, the Cascadia Fault. 